No. Big socks. Big socks. Okay. It's not oh true what they say. Gosh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> our next chef comes here all the way from Wales, yep. and uh, and also is serving. You can actually not just have his food here on stage. You can have his food on tap throughout the day. Yeah, come and see me. Uh, Chris is doing uh, a Welsh lamb's tongue. Welsh lamb tongue uh, steamed in some lava bread seaweed from where I live. It's a combination of mountain and ocean where I live in Snowdonia. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, seaweed pickle. A fermented so, hot yeah. sauce. And yeah. Laura Sylvester's. You got, you got yeah. one of my favorite people I'm in the collab- world. Collaborating with my favorite chef in the world, Laura yep. Bocaloco. Christian knows her. She's the best. She's crazy. Don't do not go party with her. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful thing to um, get her like see her name on the sign. So yeah, very, it's awesome. Uh, proud proud so, dad p- moments. So please put your hands together for Chris Roberts Yo. doing one of my favorite proteins in the world, which I think should be used a lot more in its ox heart. Ox heart, you know. Um, yeah, my ethos is like Fergus Henderson said. You know, the legend, my food hero. If you're going to kill an animal, it's only polite to eat all of it. Yeah. So I think ox, a lot of people have preconceptions about offal. They're scared of offal. You know, we've missed a few generations where people still... Am I allowed to swear? Anyway, You can but, swear. <laughs> it's a, I don't see. If there's any kids um, out there, apologies now. But yeah, but this is good meat. This is good steak. Yeah, yeah. yeah so sh- sh- Show it to me. Yeah. Not, that came from the heart. I from mean, the heart, you, you just got to get your butcher to clean it up and yeah. take all the kind of stuff out. Well, you see, show uh, it up. Show it to him. Like all yeah. the insides. So... The, the butcher, get your butcher to butterfly it. If you want to clean these ventricles and veins, trim all the fat. I'm not going to waste 20 minutes doing that now, but you get <laughs> like four or five really good lean steak. It looks like venison steak. You know, it's very lean, um, but it's beautiful. You know, especially if the animal, the cow, has lived an amazing life. This is 100% grass fed, eating Welsh grass, breathing Welsh, uh, mooing Welsh fucking moors, you know? <laughs> so. If the animals had a good life, the heart is the essence. So the heart is like the essence of beef, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not as awfully or as like, gamey or off strong as you it think. It just tastes of the best, leanest steak, yes. really. Yes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the only way to cook a heart on, bar- on fire is hot as grill you can get, you know. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, because there's not a whole lot of forgiving fat in these, as you can right. tell. Yeah. It's all on the outside, so you want to hit it hot and yeah. fast. Yeah, so I'm just going to season it simply. Some oil on there. I'll show my dad in the bowl. Sorry, I'm not doing the like a demo like this before. I'm a bit nervous, man. I'm a bit nervous. You're nervous with size 16 feet. <laughs> you kick anybody in his butt with those things. How do you get a pair of shoes that big, man? I, know, I used to, it was a nightmare back in the day, <laughs> but now, uh, yeah, bigfoot.com. So a lot is, is that what the website's called? Yeah, or Jack Camo, you know, big, uh, <laughs> fat, like, uh, yeah, fat people websites I go okay. to. Five <laughs> XL, big shoes, you know. So Worcestershire sauce, a long glug of Worcestershire sauce, sea salt. I've got some spices here. Use whatever spices you like, you know. But I've got some cumin, coriander. So, so you're going kind of North African, kind of earthy vibes yeah, with your yeah, salt. Just, yeah, yeah, and a bit of. Chipotle chili flakes. Are they not coming out the way you want? My hands are a bit too greasy. Thank you, brother. Awesome. It's very simple. It's all about rubbing your meat, massaging your meat, cooking your meat, poking it, and then eating it. (laughs) That's it. That's what we're doing on stage. Quite simple. Uh, uh, so Chris, uh, so what got you into uh, into cooking? Like, what made you want to be a chef? Um, yeah, I don't know really. You know, my, uh, growing up, I was five, six year old, when all my friends were watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was binging on Keith Floyd. <laughs> so, yeah, two fat ladies, you know. Um, yeah, my dad used to go to Patagonia a lot, so it's a big Welsh colony in Patagonia and um, Argentina, South America. Yeah. Uh, whereas, well, yeah, Welsh speaking colonies there. Dad goes there. Camping with the gauchos, fishing, you know, living the Asado way of life. He used to come back and tell me all the stories when I was a teenager. I was a bit of a twat teenager, I thought I was uncool, didn't take it in. But then when my dad passed away, I saw, recently saw, like 2016, saw Francis Malman's Chef's Table episode. And um, it's all about, he's a famous gaucho cook, you know. Yeah, Francis Malman actually was here, I think, what, five or six yeah, years ago yeah, we yeah. had him here. Yeah, he used to call Mark Parr, who opened the stage up, the wood whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, keep going, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw his episode, 
<clears throat> all my dad's stories came flooding back, you know, and hit me in and I said, fuck it, I want, I want to have a go. So with no experience, I built like a massive asado pit. Um, I did like a food festival in Carnarvon, where I'm from in North Wales. And the birds for that kind of went a bit crazy and yeah, it's just snowballed since then, really. I just love fire and smoke, you know, the best thing about fire is bringing people together, yeah? And then good food enhances all aspects of good people being together, along with copious amounts of wine, booze, good music, whatever. It all helps to a good <laughs> party, doesn't it? And I think we appreciate it more than ever now, because, fuck, COVID was a tough time, yeah, for, for fire chefs. I love having fire people on a fire, yeah, for you, like you. So we appreciate it more than ever now, I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I miss I miss lighting up fires for for the people, and we just finished a whole series of, of festivals. Yeah, so yeah, big festival really last weekend. I think our food, our meat bill alone was like seven thousand pounds. <laughs> so we had three entire legs of cow, you know, uh, seventy pork shoulders, five six kilos, cooked for twenty one hours. We do a, an insane burger. We were talking earlier about when we had the the bone marrow. We do like a, a brisket flank chuck uh, suet blend oh, just to add a more more. More juice, more fat to our burger. So super hot and fast grill. Super hot and fast. Is there some tongs about? Uh, I, you know what? I, I brought my own personal tongs, and they are yours for this demo, and they're really good. <laughs> Hold on. Where did I put those? Th there they are. There we go. Don't take these, Chris. I won't. These I are won't. good ones. I won't. I won't. I brought my good ones. <laughs> there we go. Merci, merci. And I, I don't know London prices, you know, but... In Carnarvon, North Wales, a hat like this cost me like four pounds for my butcher. So imagine like four or five steaks like that, how much that would cost, you know. So once you go give it some love, prep it. I'd recommend prepping yourself. You don't have to get your butcher to get in there. And yeah, it's a really cool cut. So you're telling them to remove the capillaries? Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> That'll be fun to do with the kids. <laughs> Just remove the capillaries. Hey, you get, they get biology in. They get to eat dinner at the same time, you know. Is that another... Um, Bowl of plates so I can put them on after. There's some chilies. I'll get you a, get you a, a hey, tray. Thank, thank you. Okay, so you did the festival, and now yeah. you're at Metopia serving up, you know, Welsh lamb tongue. Yes. Again, you know, sometimes awful, it, it scares people when, yeah. when it shouldn't because yeah. uh, it's really where the flavor is. And yeah. like you said, you know, Fergus always said, if you're going to kill an animal to eat it, you better yeah. eat the whole thing. Yeah, and, and, and for me, you know, off, some of the awful parts are, are my favorite cuts, you know. They, they, they don't taste like you imagine awful to taste if you've never tasted awful. Um, okay, there are some cuts that are a bit stronger than each other, you know, but just give it a go, you know. Um, or, and just, or, or wrap them in bacon, like, you know, yeah, sweet, yeah. sweet, <laughs> sweet breads, wrap them in pancetta, yeah. wrap them in bacon, you know. <laughs> It ease, ease that kind of uh, cut into your, to your diet. I mean, we, we were talking about faggots earlier when it comes to twigs, but a faggot, which is, you know, all the kind of awful, a lot of pig's awful, yeah. you know, cooked in, in call fat. Oh, it's I, phenomenal. I love those things. Phenomenal. Some gravy, some I potatoes. Think, I, think, I think there is a fat that's been cooked today. Also. Someone's doing faggots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Love a faggot. And, it's, and the awful is it's cheap food. You know, it's cheap food and it's so tasty and... It's so good for you. So yeah. good for you. Well, you know, look at the prime cuts have gone up like what thirty percent in the last two years. Yeah. And then, uh, and and then of course the the the, sl the the shoulders, the brisket, the tougher cuts that are using barbecue, they've gone up because everybody's right yeah. now in a live fire cooking. Brisket's gone up so much. Um, the, if you really want a good, you know, affordable cut of of, of beef, you're cooking it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cheap. It just needs a little bit of work. Uh, when it comes to like prep, yeah, especially if you're serving it kebab style, you know, have the garlic sauce, chili sauce, and stuff. You know, it's think awesome. about what this thing is pumped, right? Think about all the blood that's gone through this thing. That's a, that's one of the most, you know, working muscles on the on the animal, and there is flavor in there. Yeah, there is as a, a a cavity of flavor, and you know, don't don't waste those fat trimmings. You know, melt it down. Got some beef dripping going on. Are you having a good meetup, yeah? Are, are you guys hungry? Yes. <laughs> Is that enough meat to feed everybody, dude? <laughs> I don't know. I don't can, know. Can, I, can I slice up some more? Yeah, slice some more. <laughs> you guys look hungry. I'll get some. Can I, can I actually cut up kind of this or is this part of your lunch later? No, no. Go for it. Go for it. I think this one's probably the sharpest one, I think. I think I haven't sharpened them this week.
What's been your standout dish today so far? The tongue. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's a good question. Has anybody tried his tongue yet? How many? How many hands up? Were you Were you a bit nervous going for the tongue, or do you like? Are you a big fan of awful? Okay. Because you always think of, you know, beef tongue, uh, especially if, you're, if you've eaten a lot of Jewish food. I grew up on a lot of my best so friend's food. Yeah, there we go. Um, is that bowl still going that I can uh, put it all in? The marinating bowl? Where was the marinade? You took it away, didn't you? No, it's okay. I can do a little, I can do a little thing. Um, but it's always traditionally beef tongue. And have you ever had Welsh lamb tongue before? Yeah, I was saying when I got it, I've had, I've had beef tongue. You've had beef tongue. Never lamb tongue. And? It tastes like the best lamb you've ever had. It, yeah. He said it tastes like the best lamb he's ever had. There we go. So go see. The thing is, here's a bit of a hint when it comes to Metopia. If you're, if you're going around, the prime cuts are going to be the big lines. They're going to be huge, huge cues. The game, maybe not so big lines. The awful will be the smallest lines here. So go get, go fill your boots, and you'll surprise yourself with awesomeness. There we go. A little bit extra. Just making sure. Thank you. Stuff. Thank you. So th is this your inaugural appearance here at yeah, Utopia? Yeah, my first time here. First time visiting. First time cooking here. So, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you for the beautiful welcome. I love it. I love it. It is our first size 16 shoe on stage as well. So <laughs> there's lots of firsts here, you know? We should have waited to bring you out for the 10th anniversary. <laughs> no, I'm glad we got you up, up here first. So what, what do you do in Wales? Like, what is... what what? You got the festival. Um, can people yeah, so come and have your food on tap? Or yeah, no, so I, I mostly do like pop ups and uh, take up some dead spaces and make every event totally different. You know, usually it's banging hip hop, playing DJs, big fire. Um, so catertainment. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my day job, I still do my day job. I work as um, a support worker for people with learning disabilities. So I've been doing that for 16 years. Um, you know, it's weird. I know a lot of chefs, and that's their day job. Yeah. <laughs> and then they eventually move out of that just to go full-time chef. But yeah, but the problem is I've been too busy to do that job. But working with the same person for 16 years, he's like my family. So if I quit, I know it's going to maybe be a bit, bit, bit bad for his life. So I just I can't quit. But yeah, I've been um, doing a few TV series, too, in Wales, Welsh uh, language TV series. Um, so I've been doing that for about four years. Just filmed a series in New York. Um, and took my, one of my best mates, Thomas Paddy, Bratz Restaurant. Do you know Thomas Paddy? Yeah. Bratz is a yeah, genius chef. He, he, I mean, he won, uh, he won best uh, young chef in the country about, what, seven yeah. years ago? Yeah, yeah. So me and him from same neck of the woods. So we took him to, he, well, I was in New York for three weeks. He came for the four, four days. We did um, a takeover in Roberta's in Bushwick. With some of my food heroes there. And, um, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. So well, Tom, Thomas Perry that. started at Kitty Fisher's, and then he, uh, yeah. well, we had yeah. the place in Clips and Arch. Then Kitty Fisher's. They had, like, one of the most expensive steaks. I, I, I know Madonna told me to quit name dropping, but I did take <laughs> Matt LeBlanc, Joey <laughs> Tribbiani, to have his steak. And, uh, and I get a bit nervous. When you take out these kind of stars, you're like, oh, man, that bill's going to be at least 2,000. And it was getting close to 3,000 pounds. So I went to pay, and then Matt's like, don't worry. I got this. He had the black Amex. Of course, Joey's got a black Amex. <laughs> cool. So I'm just, yeah. So this, this, yeah. Like a, shall we clean up here a bit? Yep. I'll get you a ta I'll get you another chopping board. Can we get a chopping board yep. back there? I'm just gonna go wash my hands. Okay, we got you a chopping board, Chris. Awesome. Okay. So when it comes to, I always kind of rest my steak for half the amount of time I cook it for, but with this kind of lean heart, I don't think you're going to need yes. to rest it too so, much. So yeah, different to me for, for like a steak. Yeah, like you say, you'd leave that rest. But I like slicing it and then letting it rest in the bowl. I don't know why, but with heart, I find, I know I kind of like it. So is there another bowl for the? Let's get him another bowl. He likes his bowls. I like this. I'm learning a lot here. From Chris Roberts. And also, now I know where to buy big shoes <laughs> at Bigfoot.com. Other uh, shoe websites are available. 
So a heart needs to be eaten like between there and medium rare. If, if you go any any longer on it, it's like goes like a river. So I like to cook it there. And then when you let it rest, it's just gonna still continue cooking for a bit. Yeah, there's a drain, so I like to cut across the drain. Here's your bowl, buddy. Hey, big love. So you're doing pop-ups, you got your festival. Yeah. Um, any plans for uh, bricks and mortar and, and a full-time restaurant, or is that just a, a bit of a pipe you know dream for I, now? I love cooking, you know, but I can't think of anything worse than cooking on fire every day. Um, <laughs> you probably know the feeling when you go to the festivals and you... I just want to come home and get, get, yeah. get, a, get a Domino's pizza. Other pizzas are available. I want the crappiest <laughs> one. And then a, a, a crispy chili beef from the Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Put it right in the middle. Yeah. And fold it up and eat it. So, <laughs> it's like, rank food. You know, like I've got some of my best mates working in London with restaurants like Lee Tiernan, Thomas Paddy Pratt. Yeah, it's, it's, so Leah Tiernan, uh, another champion of, of, of yeah. you know, from the school of Fingers Furs in St. John's. Yep, yep. He was here seven years ago, and he held up the pluck. And the pluck is just pretty much all of, all of the, the awful connected, you know, and it, and, and it, it. it scared people. He, he's also the head chef of, uh, well, it was Black Axe Mangle. Now it's the formerly known, formerly as, Black known as Black Axe Mangle. And weirdly, my buddy did the logo for Prince when he changed his name from oh, the wow. artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> so I'm taking Mitch to that <laughs> restaurant. That's how we roll. Love it. Yeah, Lee Tian is a very good friend. He's one of my, yeah, yes, one of my food heroes for years. Now. He's one of my best mates. So, yeah, love oh, he's it. the best. He, we, we, we cooked for him pretty. His, we had his kids as the bubble machine kids <laughs> at our festival last weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was there. He was there. Yeah, yeah, told, him, yeah. him and Kate, his better half. Yeah. So you've gone, you've gone rare on this, haven't you? You've got a little bit of medium rare, but mainly yeah, rare. You yeah. you know, it's lean. I want to get into the ball. You know, it's still gonna, it's gonna go up a couple of degrees, I think. So okay, it's only way to eat it, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you when you put the stuff back in the bowl, you're, you're it's still cooking because it's you know it's yeah. a muscle, it's yeah. still rocking. Yeah. So you I'm want the. So you're going to add the umami bomb that is uh, Worcester, Worcester sauce. sauce. Fermented anchovies, man. Come on. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Some uh, extra virgin. Do you know how they discovered anchovies as an ingredient for cooking? No. It, it was from the salt tax in France and England. Wow. So uh, I, I know I've shared this story before on the stage. If you're new here, hopefully this is new to you. Um, a lot of chefs were looking for ways to season their food without, you know, to escape the salt tax. Yep. Uh, so that they would, you know, tr they would rub lamb or put, you know, anchovies into the lamb skin, and that was one of their ways of escaping wow. the. They could still season the food, <laughs> add that salt, but they don't have to pay the tax. Wow, I love yeah. it. And love it wasn't it. just France that had that tax; <laughs> England did as well. Love it. And, and lamb, lamb and anchovies, best mates, eh? best yep. mates, best mates. There we go. You give me, you give me anchovies. You give me some rosemary and garlic, and I'll just like embed it into that skin, oh, and just man. give it that that kind of umami pungent. And then you've got the best fat. I think some of the best fat in the world comes off lamb ribs. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And right. they've got five-year-old mutton. Uh, the, the, the actual the, the mother. Yeah, the uh, uh, curly. No, what are they? It's uh, Salim Kaziem from yeah. Aklava, and then Shauna and uh, Sam from Hangfire, which will yeah, be here Welsh, later. Welsh, 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 Welsh woman. So they've got yeah. like we've done uh, ex dairy cows. Now we're doing ex lamb. You know, yeah. you know the ones that they were in charge of, like giving you all these these yeah. you know yeah. these yeah. lambs. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 20 years ago, you could, yeah. Tastes like it should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's why I like mutton. I mean, at least I love hogget. Mm. You know, I, I love, well, you know, spring lamb, but, you know, it doesn't have the kind of the potency of that yeah, lamby well. flavor I love. Yeah, so the lambs, I, the lamb tons I've been using, so trying to, like, ethically, no, no, not ethically, what's the word, sustainably get 1,500 lamb tons from Utopia, you know, is, is hard. So, um, yeah, the slaughterhouse, um, as when I... Take the, the Welsh mountain lambs or the Snowdonia mountain lambs. We don't just eat the grass, eat the berries, flowers, wild herbs in the mountains, you know. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, they've been uh, harvesting the tons for like for a good few months and just putting them in the freezer for me. And uh, yeah, so peeling one and a half thousand lamb tons is not fun though. <laughs> okay, cool. I just. Uh, so, how are you serving this? I'm just going to make a little flatbread. 
Um, grill the flatbread. From scratch right now? You're making wow. the dough or you've actually no, no, got them already no. made? Neapolitan dough already made. Oh, whoa. So Again, and then flatbreads. If you want to do your own breads, they're the most achievable things to do on a live yeah. fire grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you actually are making the dough on stage. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> no, you're, I'm just kidding. Okay. So I like this is a Neapolitan dough. Just four ingredients, salt, water, flour, yeast. The magic's in the fermentation. I did forget to take these out the fridge, so you ideally want them room temp, you know? So I like to slap, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit too yeah, you're, cold to You're work. in the middle of service right now. We're going to forgive you for not taking them out of the fridge yeah, uh, yeah, in, in time. You're fine. Yeah. Laura's holding the fort down. Yeah, go see, go see Laura. That, that fermented hot sauce is pretty yeah, special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. It's on the right side of hot. I don't want it to blow my socks off. I want it to compliment the food, not blow my socks off. So what's next for you, Chris? What do you got coming up? Um, Apart yeah, from so looking after the youth and making sure <laughs> yeah, uh, they're okay. Plan, planning a um, couple of TV series for next year. So I think we're traveling to Scandinavia, um, maybe Patagonia too. So I also got another kid on the way. Just had a baby 15 months ago. Just found out. Yeah, we, uh, You've been I busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, game changer, game changer. <laughs> you never knew what tired was until you had a kid, right? No, no, but you know, it's like, yeah, coming to London, break away from the family and kids, thought, yeah, I'm going to be on it all. Let's have a sash, but no, bed by 10. Yes, wow, <laughs> my own bed. <laughs> yeah, I bought a Super King bed. I thought, yeah, ideal, yeah, but I got two, my son and my baby girl sleeping in the bed too with my partners. I was still dangling off the edge of the bed, so. <laughs> oh. So this door's a bit too cold to work, really, but just give it a little stretch. Should, should I get that over there on the grill yeah, now? We'll, yeah, we'll do it. Maybe we'll... Um... Ah, shit. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe we need a bit cooler, but I still need these very hot. No, I need these still to be really hot to covered in the coals, so that's okay. Now, if you've also got a campfire and you don't have a, a, a grill or bricks, you can actually cook these straight on the coals. Uh, I think Francis oh, Malman, uh, who Chris referenced earlier, they call them uh, dirty faces. You can just like throw them straight on the coals. Give, give them a little blow, and you can yeah. put them straight on there. Yeah, but we've got a grill, so you don't need to do that now. But if you don't have a grill, you can do everything in yeah. the coals. Yeah, man, and it's just pure flavor, especially if you're just using lump, lump wood or wood, you know? Don't do it if you're using briquettes. No. No. But... Because this dough is a bit thick, I like it on the grill, a bit of a lower, slower cook. And once it starts bubbling up like the Snowdonia mountain range, you know it's ready for a flip. Woo. I'm just going to hand uh, a couple of these pieces to the boss man over there. Is yeah, that okay? Cool, cool, cool. Always keep the boss man happy. a bit more salt on it. Make it rain salt. There oh, we go. Oh. Bit too hot. Does anybody know where the the middle part of this grill is? Because that's a lot. That's kind of more the heat you want. Ah, yeah, yeah, If I yeah. can find the middle bit. <laughs> Who brought this grill? Mark par when you need it. Mark took away the middle grill. This would work a treat for you guys right now. So what, what intrigues you about going to Scandinavia? So, yeah, I've got family in Norway. So, yeah, find, find, like, want to go some fishing on the coast. Copenhagen, you know, so it's, you can get some contrasts. Um, and it makes filming easier. You don't have to, you can film it kind of all in one block. Not have to film, come, I can't, we've got such a low budget, we can't afford... Um, to fly back from forth. So New York was cool because we were there for three weeks. We just, even though it was very expensive, that's oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. 
I, I saw you with uh, my friend Sibs from Schmackwich. Yeah, good old Sibs. He does the kind of the, the, the chopped cheese. The chopped cheese. It's like uh, a Philadelphia cheesesteak, but way better because he uses Wagyu. Yeah, I did a, a, a takeover at his spot too in, um, on Carmine Street. Yes, good lad, good lad. Next level chef. Yeah, the good thing I think about traveling is you just get better at, at cooking. Yeah, yeah, You get yeah. to watch everybody else do, and you yeah. get all excited about their food, <laughs> yeah. and you take some notes, bring it back, and you kind of yeah. do your own yeah, interpretation man, of it. Yep. Yeah. Those look great. It's a bit too hot, but it's not in there. It's okay. Quit making excuses. It's just the <laughs> stage. We're going to have a good time. They're hungry. You guys hungry? All right. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Whew. Who else we got cooking here today? Oh, gosh. Well, coming up, I'm glad you asked. we got Hat to Matter. He's going to be showing us uh, some of the history of Egyptian food, you know, one of the oldest cultures on the planet. Yeah. Uh, they say that the, you know, it was an argument between uh, uh, the Jews or the Egyptians. They gave us salt beef. Uh, so, yeah, you know, they're steeped in history. Then we got Mark Rosati from Shake Shack, the man wow, behind wow, wow, wow. Shake Shack. Wow. And the guy who started this special, Josh Zersky, a uh, big fan. He's always called their, their, their burger one of the best burgers going. I'm a big fan. I love a potato bun, which you don't really get over here. But, um, you know, in classic Carolina pulled pork sandwiches, it's a potato bun. It's got that, that lovely squidge vibe. Wow. Wow. Um, so we're going to talk to those guys. Uh, we got Sam Evans and Shauna Gwynn, uh, also yeah. your I'm Welsh compatriots. They're doing the, the ex, uh, I guess, yeah, Can I check breeding the lambs, like five-year-old mutton. And they're going to be cooking that over there. I just had a slice of that. That was gorgeous. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, T and G, Turner and George Butchery will be on stage at six o'clock. Wow, so That's Matt Kemp. Uh, will Richard Turner be up here? Maybe you never know. A Richard Turner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Computer says no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hatem's cool. I was in his restaurant in Dubai in March. He's got like one of the biggest smokers I've ever seen. Um, yeah, probably as just as big as your smoke, nearly as big as your smoker. <laughs> no one's but bigger no, no, than he's mine. not. Uh, yeah, really cool setup, and he's very nice. Very nice. There we go. Everybody's nice. You gotta be nice. Yes! <laughs> there he is. Alright, so we're gonna prepare this dish. Cool. Um, I'm gonna make a little, just a very simple pickle. I know everybody's using sumac on shallots nowadays, but I love it. So yeah, I've got some sliced shallots. Well, the sumac gives you that kind of zestiness, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, it's like nice acidity, but a bit more balanced than like lime and lemon. Uh, yeah, they can kind of go almost too tart, can't yeah, they? Yeah. That's got the right level of citrus. Yeah. yeah so you're doing a quick pickle. Really quick pickle. And the, the sumac's really cool color, too. So sumac shallots, bit of a apple cider vinegar. It's, my, it's, it's sweet, the best yeah. vinegar going. Although be careful. If you go to Portugal to get uh, apple cider vinegar, it's a lot more sweeter. Yeah, yeah. So just be uh, careful. It's almost like apple juice with a little bit of tang. <laughs> That's more tang with a tiny bit of sweet. So we got a bit more. In. Yeah, you need more. You need more vinegar. You need more tang. And um, yeah, just very rustic. Just chop <laughs> <laughs> whole parsley leaves in. No messing. It's like a parsley salad, really. And then you gotta go back on service right after this, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, is no, Laura no, shitting no. herself right now? <laughs> Sorry, what time are we on anyway? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Does anybody know what time it is? Half oh, past wow, two. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, we're, good, we're, good, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Thank you. Thank so, you. Got a bit more pasta. So a super quick pickle. Yep. So very simple. So you got your ox heart, your grilled ox heart steaks. You got your I peppers. I'm going to this up on that board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, I, can so, get, I can get another one. Oh. Sorry. There we go, more. Ah, uh, that's how we should bubble. Matt is the, he's the genius. Are you all following Matt on Instagram? Yes. yes. What's your Instagram, Chris, while we're here? What's oh, your Instagram? Um, at Flame Beaster. Give me a follow. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Christian. So here I've just charred some peppers. Well, Matt's charred the peppers. And, uh, and some chilies. Again, very dusty. Ooh. Slippery. Oh, sorry. And you keep all that chard skin on. Sorry. 
Oh, the char bit's the best bit. Yeah. I know sometimes they do it. They peel. They peel it off. I yeah, like that char bit. Yeah, just nice smokiness. Vegetables love live fire. It's not just yep. meat. Vegetables, fruits, they all love it. They all bring something to the to the party. And I love it. You just throw veg into the embers, and it kind of just like confies in its own juice. It's a beautiful thing. And some chilies. Oh, thank you. Nearly had a nightmare that. <laughs> Again, keeping the, keeping the cat chats in on the chilies. So, Chris, do you ever think you're going to kind of go full on into food and, and, or are you going to stay as a key worker, you know, as a therapist with the, with the youth, or what are you thinking? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I still, I, know I, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, you know? Yeah, don't. You know what? Don't, don't worry. Growing uh, up is a trap, so don't ever grow up. <laughs> I know you got two kids and stuff. <laughs> so I'm just adding, this is a nice, nice little cheat, but you could fire out some garlics and stuff too, but I'm just going to add some, just a little bit of beef paste. It's just roasted peppers, garlic, chili, some spices. Blend it down. Um, yeah, we're kind of ready to rock in a bit. Have we got the bone marrow? The bone marrow, yeah. We had bone marrow. I think we went through it on the last one. I think I've got some. Do you have? You, did you bring bone marrow? Yeah. So there's more bone marrow going. Awesome! Awesome! Yeah, yeah. We'll just uh, no. We'll just scoop some out. I don't know, we'll scoop the marrow out. Yeah, we'll scoop the marrow out. Oh, you're gonna scoop it out? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all good, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, bone marrow, God's better, I call it, you know, it's. It's an amazing ingredient. If, if you are going to take bone marrow out, it's always best to do it when it's cold. Otherwise, it just gets really difficult to handle. Yeah. Uh, but all, if you're making burgers at home, just oh, ask man. your butcher for one of these. And uh, even if he, if he doesn't split it in half, because that's a pain in the ass for him, yep. just get it whole and just get a bit, little spoon in there, grab it, chunk it up. And I always say between 7 and 10% uh, bone marrow towards the, the beef and then maybe another normal like about 10% uh, percent fat. So always go minimal 10, 20 percent fat. You know, but if you, you know want to add, burgers. if you want to add the best, add this in there too. Oh, yeah, it. it's just beef, beef on beef action. A it, little it, bit. It's <laughs> crack. It's it's crack fat. Never had crack, and I don't condone crack, but that's what it is. Is, is that hot enough? Yeah. Okay. Are we on the home stretch, Chris? Yeah, we're on the home stretch. Can we get those other breads? Those are beautiful. Oh, asbestos sir. hands, Chris Roberts, Ow. right there. Nope, not, not asbestos hands. <laughs> so, grab some marrow. Check, check, one, two. Oh, okay, so this, this is called a flambadoo. Well, it's not quite hot enough. But that's called a flambadoo, ancient Nordic cooking technique. Yeah. Where you can put any kind of fat in there, it cooks it, and you can just drizzle it on, I don't know, oysters, breads. Oh, oysters, amazing. Beef fat oysters. That's like death Romeo right there. <laughs> and you just want to lube all of that dough up in that beautiful beefy marrow. 
If you want your own one of these, uh, uh, Alex Pohl, who, who we've had on stage, he's headlined here before. Yeah, he, uh, he, makes he, ones. he makes really yeah. good ones. Bit of a longer handle, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's hot enough. He did a bit hotter. It's all cool, it'll keep, all cool, all cool, all cool. Yeah, the key with those things, you, you got to stick them in the coals, put charcoal in them, yeah. really get them fired so up. Usually it fires up, but it did the job. It did, it yeah, worked. Well, you, you're well, you're well, making excuses and it worked. It worked, it worked. You've got the shiny, happy bread now. <laughs> now let's build this kebab, yeah? <laughs> this is the best kebab ever. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. And then it, um, I, now I know what you're talking about, all the juices in the bottom. Yeah, yeah I never that, waste. That, that extra tangy that bit. That liquid gold. That is liquid gold, yeah? Oh, crying right now. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> My goodness. So, <laughs> sorry, there's no Michelin star presentation here, but. This, I, this, I, this is better. <laughs> this is better. I, don't want, I, want, I want craziness. I want live fire ox heart. Doesn't it look fancy? There's your quick pickle. So thank you. No worries. That's a good tang you got on those bad boys. Make it rain, shallots, Make pickled shallots. Bottled glow, as they say in Welsh. <laughs> there we go. And some bit of yogurt. It's just like throwing your food on a piece of bread. I love it. <laughs> And everything tastes off. better with yogurt, right? And then make it rain, salt. Boom. Boom. A round of applause for Chris Roberts. We are not worthy. We are not worthy. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Enough. That's Thank good you. eating. Thank you for looking you're, up to me. Thank you for looking you're a good man. <laughs> Don't let go. If it gets awkward, count to 10. It'll be over soon. Oh, I love embracing it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Wow. Um, All right, so we're going to chop these up and put them in some little uh, boats. And cool. you guys can come up and uh, me, uh, and eat, and no fighting at the front. Thank you, sir. Always, always, no, uh, no fighting at the front. This is food. That, uh, this is love. Sure. This is uh, awesomeness. Hey, do you mind if I go back to the Lambton station? I've yeah, left no. the team for. He's got to go. We're gonna serve his food. And uh, come and see me with your meat specs later. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So coming up in a bit, we've got uh, Hatta Matter bringing the Egyptian truth. You're going to have a lot of truth bombs, man. A lot more history than you probably expected. Uh, and go see this man over. He's on the top floor midway through uh, with Laura Sylvester. And he's doing a, le a Welsh lamb tongue. Uh, and it's, a it's one of the first things I ate here. And it is uh, unbelievable. flyable. <laughs> 